Hey crew, the help here. Miles Stairs Wickshop, wickshop.com. Sorry for the delay in getting a video out. For the last couple of weeks, we've been sort of fighting the flu here at the shop, so things have been a little slow. I did want to get this out. Uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about the basics, sort of what you're looking for in lamps, chimneys, um, wicks, what fuel to use, and this will mostly be centered around huh, center draft and side draft lamps. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is chimneys. Uh, there's a lot of, of different makes and models and styles. Here's a page from the 1891 Hubert and Spencer catalog. It's available uh, via us or on Google. Uh, this is all the American size lamp chimneys they had listed. Um, and here on this uh, other page is some of the Argand and Matador lamp uh, chimneys. And we'll talk about some of those a little bit later. Uh, we will be talking about lamp wicks. At a later date, I was hoping to find some some new old stock wicks that I have running around, but I, I simply couldn't find them. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the chimneys first, since that's where we're at. There's, there's three or four different styles of glass that chimneys were made out of historically. Um, soda ash uh, and lime glass, and then uh, lead glass after that, known as flint glass, and then borosilicate, uh, which is what we use in lamp chimneys today, is a, um, a heat-treated borosilicate. The ones that come from Royal Craft are, I believe, heat-treated flame-cut borosilicate. The ones that come from us that we have made are lab-grade um, heat-treated borosilicate glass. But historically, lamps have been... Um, chimneys, I should say, have been uh, soda ash or pot ash and then eventually lead glass or what's known as flint glass. And then uh, it recently years after the invention of borosilicate or uh, Pyrex as we know it here in America, uh, those were made out of um, borosilicate. So let's take a look at some of the glasses and how they were made and maybe why we would consider um, if we found a chimney made out of lead glass or soda ash or something like that, why we wouldn't use them. I, I personally don't use chimneys that I know are period, chimneys that are signed, and we'll go over what a signed chimney is here in a little bit. So here's a Wikipedia article on soda lime glass or soda ash glass, which is used to make the most common type of glass, uh, soda lime silicate glass. They're generally used in um, flat glass for construction or containers like food and, and drink bottles, things like that. The soda lime silicate glass is made out of three essential ingredients. The silica, which is uh, sand, is the glass forming oxide. The lime provides a chemical stability. And then the soda ash acts as the fluxing agent to help reduce the furnace temperatures required and uh, help melt the silica used and reduce the uh, energy required to produce the glass. It also helps it flow a little better when molding and blowing. Um, many of these were tubes that were blown out and then cut off and then reshaped by the um, glass experts by hand to fit the shape needed for the lamps. I, I don't know of any that were blown. Some of them were molded. In any case, the soda ash was replaced by lead glass or flint glass. Here's a Wikipedia article on that. And I'm sure now you can see my concern. Uh, the article says here that lead glass or flint glass uh, is a variety of glass in which lead replaces the calcium content of the typical, typical potash. Uh, lead glass contains between 18 and 40 percent by mass of lead to oxide, uh, while modern lead crystal uh, historically known as flint glass, uh, due to the ori original silica source, which was flint, uh, contains a minimum of 24% 20 lead oxide. Um, it's, you know, there was a lot of this stuff made uh, for drinking vessels and things. There was a lot of it made for lamp chimneys, um, some nicer um, buildings had lead glass, in the windows because it was a bit clearer than the old soda ash glass. Um, and, and honestly, this is the one that I, I really kind of worry about with original chimneys is lead glass. Uh, we really don't know how much of that lead is is being freed by the heat of the lamp and 
and we're being exposed to it. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not down with that. But we'll take a couple, look at a couple of uh, um, chimneys that are signed, a flint glass or lead glass. And it's, you know, it's fun to look at the signature marks on the chimneys and see the history. But I, I, I don't operate them. Uh, I, I usually leave those for display purposes only. Um, and then use a modern borosilicate glass chimney, um, which brings us to bor borosilicate glass, um, which is uh, made in the United States for um, various food grade purposes under the uh, common trade name Pyrex. And we can see here in the Wikipedia article that borosilicate glass is made with uh, silica, which is the sand we used before, and boron trioxide as the main uh, glass forming co compounds. Uh, it has a very low coefficient of thermal expansion. It make, makes it great for lamps. A lot of lamp chimneys would, would tend to crack or break, on rare occasion even almost sort of explode or shatter into pieces in a warm room. If a very, you know, a door was open on a very cold day, uh, the shock of the different, uh, differential in temperature would cause the glass to to expand more on one side than it was on the other, contract more on one side than the, it was on the other, and it would crack and break. Borosilicate does not generally have that issue uh, nearly as much, as, especially not in the, at the heat ranges that we're looking at for um, for lamp, uh, lamp glass. It also melts at a much higher temperature, which means that uh, you don't get some of the internal melting or burning like you would on like soda lime or soda ash glass chimneys and I've got an example of that here in a little bit but um, I, I replace all of mine with uh, you know any of the chimneys that I, I suspect or can prove are originals uh, especially if they're signed I go ahead and replace them with one of ours um, either a Royal Craft or if it's something a little more exotic one of our customs um, just to you know just to be safe i i don't want to have my my family breathing in lead fumes or or god only knows what else I, you know some of those manufacturers were not particularly not particularly scrupulous on what went into some of their manufacturing processes but um what you're looking for here really is indications that um you know a lamp that you've picked has um or got off of ebay has a an original chimney on it and unfortunately, unless they're signed, um, which is an etch mark on the top of the chimney, unless they're signed, like this chimney here, and this is an original Macbeth number no. 4 pearl glass, uh, we know it was made in period, it is etched, uh, but unless they're signed, unfortunately, you really just don't know if they're if they're an original period chimney or not. And I know a lot of people will try to argue that, well, you know, there are imperfections in the glass that'll tell you, there's imperfections in how the ends are, are formed that will tell you, and that's just simply not the case anymore. There's a lot of um, glass coming out of China and India and other uh, Asian countries that are, uh, and even some of the Eastern European countries that are new manufacture, but they have many of the same imperfections as as the older original chimneys like bubbles in the glass we'll get into that later but the the trademarks are fun here um here is a an acme um and this one is one of my favorites this is an acme uh lead flint uh trademarked acme made for a rochester number zero and it's actually in um in the signature what it's what it's made for and that's kind of fun you don't see that a lot um, I've got another one here this is a Sherwood or Sherwoods I believe there's an S the the mark here is a little hard to read but it says British make 20 line and this is for a 20 line matador interestingly enough I actually found this one in the wild in Oregon uh, which was a surprise to me I did not expect to find a very obviously European manufactured original chimney here on the west coast of the United States, but it does happen. And I believe this one to be soda ash glass, and I'll show you here in a minute why that is. But you can see there's a little bobble at the top where the flame cut isn't quite perfect. Uh, you've got the mark on it. We can be pretty sure that this is an original in period 20 line matador chimney. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at that little bobble on the top. This would have been where a uh, glass blower would have 
heat it all the way around and and cut the uh, with with a flame cut it off i'm pretty sure this was done by hand a lot of these were drawn out tubes of glass and then they would finish the one end as the top and then they would draw out the bottom end to make the shape in the way that they wanted generally with the use of uh, a couple of little molds or half molds but here's the bottom end of that same chimney and this is why i believe this is soda ash glass i so i have scrubbed this pretty vigorously with some steel wool, with some stainless steel wool, um, used various uh, things on it to try and um, solvent it off. With solvents, nothing will touch it. Um, I believe that this is where there was a mismatch between the flame spreader height and the chimney, and we had a large amount of heat right here at that, at that uh, little shelf which caused the glass itself to either begin to melt or oxidize. And this, this is something you can see. I, this is the only one I've ever seen. We've heard of it before, but this is the only time I've personally ever seen it. So that's kind of fun. Here is one. Uh, this is probably one of my favorites. This is a fireproof brand made in Saxony, uh, I believe for H. Powell who was an ironmonger in Blackwood. And an ironmonger is somebody that sells things for the household and the garden and the alike. And this particular ironmonger had a uh, chain fireproof brand uh, make him signed chimneys for his shop. And that's pretty cool. You don't see uh, too much of that going on. I know the chain fireproof brand chimneys are around, but I had not yet seen one. Maybe somebody else has. Um, that had a, a signature for a specific shop on it, uh, kind of like we've done in the past when we could still get uh, new manufactured wicks with our name on them. Now this one came off of my daughter's Miller Number no. 2. This is a Keystone brand, Keystone Glass, Best Lead. And you can see the Keystone is the outline of the, of the logo there, and you've got your, your glass blower in the middle uh, doing his work and making your chimney for you. This is pretty nice. Uh, it came with her lamp. It's an American-made chimney, obviously, uh, definitely in period for the lamp. Uh, may have been original to the lamp, but, I mean, how do you know after 140 years, it really? Uh, but that's a cute little, I love the, love the kind of keystone shape and the little blast glower guy is kind of unique. Um, some of these are pretty fun, but um, that's a pretty good indication of... You know, if you've got a signed chimney, you've got a, an original chimney. Anybody modern is going to be putting a, a sticker on it. It's just so much cheaper to do these days. So another indication that people will attempt to use to date chimneys is how they're how they're manufactured, whether or not they're saw cut or flame cut, how the flame cut looks, um, and that's just not a great indication. For instance. Here is that uh, Macbeth number four that we looked at originally, which is signed, and it has been cut and ground and polished. So it is nice and square. It's got a nice square polished bottom, but you see there is a big flea bite out of this. Um, somebody took it out of the lamp a little hard one time. And this right here, uh, this is a really great example of why we have lift galleries on, on lamps. These older chimneys that were cut, um, even if they were cut and polished, you know, flat cut and polished or ground flat and polished, they would still get flea bites. And this is a, this is a stress area where, um, some of the older soda ash and lead glass lamp chimneys could have a catastrophic failure due to, um, temperature differentials where you would have a, a crack started due to a flea bite and then you'd have a draft come in and that um, flea bite would uh, flea bite crack would just follow right up the chimney and crack it right in half um, and that you know, that's that's why we've got the lift galleries that way you can put the chimney in the lamp and then you don't have to worry about taking the chimney out of the lamp you simply lift the gallery light the lamp and lower the gallery and then you don't have as high a chance of causing those flea bites and therefore uh, causing, um, you know, a stress position where you can, you can end up having a broken chimney. But uh, yeah, this one's ground, uh, cut and ground, and then polished. Um, so this one is, is period. And we know that because it's signed. 
So let's go ahead and go back to that 20 line matador I had originally. Um, here it is. And you can see that little wobble at the top. This is flame cut. Uh, some people will say that flame cut chimneys are, are all new manufacturer. No, this is this is an original uh, an original flame cut um, signed 20 line matador chimney made in England in period. So this would be an original chimney. And again, we know that because it's signed. Um, we know that they use these manufacturing processes. Um, we know that both of these processes were done. Some, uh, you know, s some glass makers were a little more scrupulous in how nice and flat their bases were. Some of them just weren't. So there just really isn't, um, there isn't a way to indicate whether or not a chimney is new just because it's either flame cut or saw cut. Now, as an absolute contrast to that, here is that chain fireproof brand chimney, and it's got a pretty rough saw cut on top. You can even see here on the side of the chimney where whoever was producing this chimney skipped it across the saw a few times before they finished the cut. And there are some of those imperfections. You can see some of the, the pulled bubbles in the glass. Um, but this one's a pretty rough saw cut. And I, I have seen this kind of saw cut on some of the newer manufacturer chimneys, especially those coming out of like Turkey uh, and the cheaper um, side draft chimneys coming out of China. So this is not uh, this is not something has, that has stopped. Uh, this is very much something that is still going on. So here is a modern flame cut. This one is on one of our Royal Craft chimneys. Uh, very nice. It's uh, pretty flat all the way around. It's not as nice as something that's saw cut and then square ground and polished, but it's it's darn close. The really great thing about uh, even the older flame cut chimneys or especially the modern flame cut chimneys is they have a nice little bulge, uh, just a little tiny bulb of, of extra glass around the base of the chimney. So on the rare occasion that they do flea bite, they don't tend to cause the same kind of uh, fracture lines that you would on a, on a saw cut chimney that uh, that has not been flame cut or flame polished you don't uh, you don't generally tend to get those kind of flea bites that will cause cracks and run up the chimney and cause the chimney to break so that's great um, you know it's still nice to be able to just um, get them fitted into the into the flame gallery and use the lift gallery but uh, if you do have a lamp that doesn't have a lift gallery the newer chimneys with the flame cut ends that are done in the modern way are much less susceptible to flea bites and therefore cracking and, and breaking. So that's kind of chimneys in a nutshell. Um, we'll go ahead and move on down the lamp and talk about wicks. Uh, as a rule I do not burn wicks I have found in the lamps. You, uh, the, my issues are twofold. First of all, you don't know what was burned in that lamp. There could have been something, <laughs> Lord only knows what could have been burned in there, diesel fuel or something else, more toxic, uh, less refined fuels. Uh, uh, you just don't know what has happened to that wick. And you can wash, you know, you can wash all of the lamp, you can wash the chimney. Um, theoretically, you can sort of kind of wash the wicks, but you just, you just really don't know. And I haven't found the capillary action on them to be very great once they've soaked up kerosene and dried out sometimes two or three times before they were, you know, finally retired. As far as new old stock wicks go, you can find a lot of them on eBay. Um, they were never issued. They were never put in a lamp. They never had fuel put to them. Those are perfectly fine. I've burned a couple of those. The capillary action has been fine. They don't seem to really degrade a lot if they've been stored well. And you don't have a bunch of built-up gunk from, you know, years of kerosene evaporating through the wicks. So they, they seem to pre perform pretty well. I generally just use new wicks. Um, yeah, we have a variety of new wicks for sale. So there's, um, you know, there's really no reason for me to go uh, utilizing the ever-dwindling supply of new old stock stuff with uh, logos on it. I just, I, I can't bring myself to burn something that I almost consider to be a bit of uh, industrial artwork. Up to you. I, I prefer to use new manufactured wicks. If you prefer to use uh, new old stock or utilize the wick that was in the lamp when you got it, that's perfectly acceptable. There are some ways of extending that wick life for some lamps. So 
Um, just keep in mind that there is a, a minor risk that something was burned in that lamp that you really don't want uh, um, burning in your house. But they, honestly, the risk there is even pretty low. And that brings us to fuel. Uh, there's really only two kinds of fuel you should be burning in a kerosene lamp. Uh, and that is either low odor mineral spirits, which is uh, an ultra refined petroleum distillate of approximately the same um, burn rate as kerosene or kerosene itself. Most of these lamps, if, if not all of these lamps, were originally designed to burn coal oil, which was produced by heating and, and steaming coal. But um, with the invention of kerosene as a petroleum distillate, they uh, just simply became kerosene lamps. And coal oil was, was called kerosene, so there is some confusion there. So kerosene is, is good in these lamps. Um, if you want something that's a little more refined, uh, maybe has a f a fewer car carcinogens in it, uh, go with low-odor mineral spirits. Low-odor mineral spirits is a much more refined version of that. That's been cleaned up, and there's a lot less uh, nasty volatiles in there. Not that there are particularly that many in kerosene to begin with, but it's it's uh, simply a better, a better, more refined version, and it will be a little more expensive. For those of you uh, living uh, in the central states or back east where you have 1K clean kerosene at a pump at your gas station, I am completely jealous. Uh, you guys and gals will have a much easier time of getting fuel. For the rest of us, you can generally find kerosene or low odor mineral spirits um, in the paint aisle or one of the aisles adjacent, maybe the solvent aisle of your local uh, hardware store. And th there really isn't much else. People will will run diesel fuel in these lamps, and that's not great. Uh, the wick life's going to be low. You're not going to get a lot of heat output. There's going to be um, a noticeable smell. And there can be with kerosene. There can be with low-order mineral spirits as well, but it's going to be much more noticeable with diesel fuel. Um, <clears throat> people have suggested jet fuel. There is uh, one type of jet fuel that is clean. And that is Jet A. And I, the reason I didn't mention this is because Jet A is essentially just um, refined, filtered kerosene. It, it isn't anything else. So for those of you who are aviators that have access to Jet A, that can be an option. I cannot recommend any of the others. Some of the other jet fuels have anti-gelling and de-icing agents and things in them. Uh, to keep the jets in the the jets and the jets clean, um, and I, I I just don't I don't think uh, any of that is is very good for your health. But you can use Jet A, which is uh, aircraft grade kerosene, if you can get it for a substantially lower price than the one gallon or three gallon cans you can get um, at your local hardware store. Outside of that. The last thing you really need to worry about is burning a wick in, a new wick or a new old stock wick or even an old wick that's uh, been removed from a lamp you might need to re-level. And honestly, the the best thing I've found to do this is good old Ronson all lighter fluid. You take a, a new clean dry wick, you put it in your lamp, um, trim it off, trim the wick off nice and flat as, as we showed you in that uh, in that video of trimming and leveling a Victorian arrow lamp. And I'll go ahead and put uh, a link to that in the comments. Um, but yeah, that the Ronsonol lighter fluid works very well. The bottle has a nice little spout. You don't have to have like an eyedropper or something. You can just use it directly out of the bottle itself instead of having to have any fancy mechanics. And uh, it works well. It burns nice and clean. It burns nice and hot. It allows the um, cotton in the wick to get up to temperature, so it'll go ahead and burn off efficiently all of the extra fuzz and things. And, you know, I've been using it for years. Miles has been using it for years. It just, it's a one product that just seems to be easy uh, and relatively expensive. You can see here uh, the price on this can was about $2.50. There. You know, and it, it, that tells you honestly how long this stuff will last for this. Miles has been using this um, particular can since sometime around 99 or 2000. So, uh, you know, a little bit goes a long way and it won't be very expensive. It's definitely not going to break the bank. Um, what's you know, the biggest cost, honestly, is going to be in fuel. So anyways, that's kind of a, a quick primer of what you're looking for, what you can expect to be using. Um, 
you know, and this is this is just a, a scratch of the surface. We have so much more to talk about. There's shades and hanging apparatus and burners and um, spring motors and it just there's so much to cover. So um, hopefully we'll be able to keep uh, making a few videos here and there and getting them up online. Uh, we're going to try for a video every two weeks. If we can do more than that, we will. We're pretty busy over here, but we enjoy this. You know, this is a lot of fun yeah, getting on and showing people new things. And there's there's a lot in the lamp world, uh, in the heater world. Um, hopefully we'll be doing some heater videos here pretty soon as well. We've been going through the collection and cleaning some and polishing some up. So, so thank you for watching and thank you for your patronage. We'll uh, see you in the next video.